Hi guys, uh, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I am a consultant cardiologist in York and today I wanted to do a video on the best test to capture your palpitations. All right. Now palpitations are an extremely worrying symptom for many patients even though the majority are not dangerous. The way you know that they're not dangerous is by recording what is happening to the heart rhythm when you have your palpitations. And if the heart rhythm is normal during the palpitations, then it's not a heart rhythm disturbance, okay? So being able to record your heart rhythm during your palpitations is the way you get clarity over whether your palpitations are because of a heart problem or not and whether they're dangerous or not, okay? Now the problem is, what tends to happen in day-to-day -day life is the patient gets palpitations, he then goes to the doctor. After a few days, the doctor will organize an ECG. And the, not surprisingly, the patient won't be having the palpitations during the ECG. So the doctor says, your ECG looks fine. The patient goes home. He gets more palpitations. He then goes back to the GP. The GP then says, look, let me book you for a 24-hour ECG or a halter monitor. Unsurprisingly, very often, the patient will not get his symptoms during the 24-hour halter monitor. And um, the GP says, well, your halter is unremarkable. The patient feels continues to feel really, really anxious because he says, well, if I didn't get my symptoms during the 24-hour halter monitor, then how can they say that everything is okay? And therefore, um, the patient does not feel reassured. His palpitations continue and the patient is lost as to what to do next. So today I thought I'd talk to you about the various uh, different tests uh, that are available to try and capture your palpitations and what the advantages and disadvantages are of each of them, okay? Okay, so number one, a simple ECG. This only captures six seconds of time, okay? If during those six seconds you have your palpitations, great, the ECG is very, very useful. But more likely than not, it is highly, highly unlikely you will have your symptoms during that six second period and therefore the ECG then becomes useless. We do the ECG because it's something we do. It's easily available. Uh, it may give insight into whether there are any other abnormalities with the heart, like a previous heart attack, etc. And if that is uh, seen, then maybe it just points to the fact that, yes, your palpitations could be due to your heart because you see some abnormalities with the heart on the ECG. But that doesn't really tell you truthfully whether your palpitations are due to your heart. It just hints at that possibility. So an ECG largely is not very useful. Some people have something called Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, etc. In those people, you can see subtle changes which may suggest that those palpitations could be coming from the heart due to a certain rhythm disturbance. Um, but again, it's not absolute proof. All right. So the next test that people uh, often have to have is a 24-hour ECG, okay? These are usually useless because the pickup is only about 8 to 10%, which means that if I give 100 people with palpitations a 24-hour ECG, maybe eight of them will come back and say, I had my symptoms during the 24-hour ECG. So I'll only really be able to make a diagnosis in 8% of these patients. Okay, and <clears throat> so the only reason to have a 24-hour ECG, well, there are two reasons to have a 24-hour ECG. One, if you reliably get your palpitations every day and you're sure you'll catch them in a 24-hour period. And secondly, if there is something that you can do to bring on your palpitations and you are very sure and it is very consistent that if I do this, I get my palpitations. In that setting, have a 24-hour ECG do the things that bring on your palpitations because if you don't get your palpitations the EC the 24 hour ecg is useless all right now a 24 hour ecg or a halter records continuously for 24 hours so it will record everything that goes on in the heart and <clears throat> the only way we know that what we see is actually related to your symptoms 
is if you write down on a diary card, I got my symptoms at such and such a time. So most times when people give you a halter monitor, they should give you a diary card and they should say, well, look, you know, if you get something, you must put the time down and you must say what you got. And then we can look at the halter monitor and time it and see whether you had anything at that time. Uh, but a lot of people forget to fill in the diary cards. Some people uh, forget to return the diary cards. Um, and therefore, often we're none the wiser. The other problem is that a lot of people get very anxious about the extra information coming from the halter. So you're having the halter done for palpitations. If you don't get the palpitations, the, to my mind, disregard the halter. The halter will pick up lots of other things. It'll pick up how slow your heart goes when you're sleeping at night. It'll pick up whether you're getting extra beats, PVCs, PACs, Everyone gets that. Everyone's heart rate goes slow at night. So that just shouldn't worry you. But a lot of people do get worried about it because they say, oh, my heart rate fell to 35. Well, that, if that wasn't causing you your symptoms, then don't worry about it. Because what does it matter if the heart rate goes to 35? It's not causing you any symptoms. It's not giving you any, it's not putting you at any harm, in, uh, causing you any harm. Um, I mean, I don't have any symptoms at the moment. So what does it matter what's going on in the background in my heart? You know, if I have no symptoms, I wouldn't go and get a test done if I had no symptoms. So if something isn't really causing me any symptoms and I'm otherwise a healthy person, then I should, I, I, then there is no need to be worried about this extra kind of noise or extra information that you get from the halter. So, <clears throat> Uh, so the uh, other disadvantages of a halter is that when you have this thing, you cannot shower and that's very uncomfortable for people. Uh, and the other thing to say is sometimes you can have halters for 48 hours or 72 hours and the pickup rate undoubtedly improves if you um, increase the amount of time. But again, of course, it's very inconvenient because you can't shower, etc. Uh, so whilst halters have a role in a minority of people, uh, they're, um, they're certainly being overused and uh, their pickup is no more than 8%. All right. Then you have something called an event recorder. Now, an event recorder is a device which, you can, which will only record what you ask it to record. So it's not recording continuously like a halter. And because it's not recording continuously, you can keep it on for much longer because the battery won't finish. And therefore you can keep it on for four weeks or up to six weeks at most. The good news is that they have a memory, which means that you press a button after you develop. So you, you're sitting there, you develop your symptoms, your heart starts going fast, you press a button, and the event recorder will have recorded 30 seconds of what happened before you press the button. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> uh, and then it'll record what's happening then. Problem with these is that they tend to be really faffy to use. And actually, um, sometimes what happens is you cannot activate it. Sometimes a lot of people tell me, I've never used one myself, but a lot of my patients come back and tell me that they find it very difficult to use it. And then when you do get it, you have to send the recordings down using a phone line. And that can be quite difficult for a lot of patients. So when they work well, they work really well. But for the majority of people, they find it a real faff and they just can't get it to work. So again, an event recorder is bet much better than a halter, uh, but not great by any means. Now, there is something new and very, very innovative uh, available, which, is, which you may not know about, and this is a wearable patch. Uh, there are two I know of. One is called a Zio patch. The other is called a Bardi patch. These are excellent, okay? And uh, I have one here. This is a body patch, this one. And so basically what this is, is here uh, is the whole thing. This is it. And all you do is um, there is the machine. There's the button. So all you do is you take this thing off, okay, and you, st you stick it down in the chest just like that. And that's it. It stays on you. And then every time you get your symptoms, you press this button here like that. Uh, now, this patch will record every single heartbeat for seven days if it's a body patch or 14 days if it's a Zio patch. It records every single heartbeat. So that's a real advantage. But at the same time, all you do, you don't have to rely on, you know, looking up the time, etc. You just press the button and it will put a marker 
um, where you've pressed the button on your ECG. So you know exactly what time uh, you felt something, okay? Um, you still have to fill in a diary card because you have to explain exactly what you felt. You know, some people say, well, I felt a thud, and then they may get a flutter. So it's still worth documenting what you got. But the fact that you have a button there to put a marker on the ECG is a really, really clever idea. And the very fact that these are so straightforward, there's not many leads going around. It just sits there. Uh, you can uh, shower with them. You can do everything normally with them. Um, and and the, the real advantage is that actually uh, you don't even have to come to hospital for, to fit one of those. You know, you can do it yourself. And you can actually, um, after the seven days have elapsed or the 14 days have elapsed for a Zyopat, you simply take it off. They come in one of these boxes like this and you just put the thing in in the box with your diary card and you post it. And once you post it, it goes uh, to a central office where people will record the uh, people will analyze this within a two day period and then they will send your cardiologist the report so so many advantages a you keep it on for much longer the pickup with these is 50 percent 46 to 50 percent compare that to a halter 46 to 50 percent pickup one in two people you will catch their palpitations with these you don't have to come to hospital to have it on you can do but you don't have to you don't have to come to hospital to give it back. It, um, <clears throat> you simply post it. You don't have to wait months for the results to come back because all of these go to a central place where someone, you know, the company, the manufacturer will analyze it. And then once they've analyzed it, they send your cardiologist the report by email and the cardiologist gets the whole data set. He's got it on email. He checks it and then he sends you the results. So they are really, really efficient. It's a very efficient way of doing things. It's also got a very high pickup, um, and they're great, absolutely great. Now, the problem with these is that they're not available to individual patients, so you are a little bit at the mercy of your GP and your local hospital to see whether they would offer you one or not. Um, they're not they are available to healthcare professionals so i i buy a bunch of these and if i have any patients uh, who get in touch with me uh, then i just send one out to them they're around about 380 to 400 pounds um but i've certainly used them in a lot of patients who um said to me you know there were two patients in particular i remember who were too anxious to get out of the house so they said, look, you know, we are very anxious. We, we suffer from a lot of anxiety. We struggle to get out of the house. We hate hospitals, but we're getting palpitations and we don't know what to do because we'd have to come to hospital and we just can't do that. So in those people, what I said is, well, why don't I send one of these out to you and I'll send you a video on how to put it on. And um, I did that and actually we got beautiful recordings and I was able to reassure them on the phone. So these are really, really, really good and I, I can't recommend them highly enough. They're beautiful. Okay, then, um, uh, by the way, if you want to find out more about these, you know, I'll put some information on my Facebook page, but you can also email me if you want to explore this. Um, then there is another thing which is quite innovative, and that is the, called the Alive Core app. Okay, the Alive Core app. This is a really innovative bit of kit, which is increasingly being used. Basically, if you have a smartphone, you can download an app on your phone, and as part of the app, you also get a case which has sensors. And so, basically, what happens is, if you get your symptoms, you get your machine out, start the app, hold these two sensors between your hands like this and it will record a single lead ECG lasting 30 seconds as default on your uh, iPhone or smartphone. And that ECG can then be saved, it can be sent um, <clears throat> away and interpreted for a small charge. The big advantage is that everyone's got a phone on, uh, which is near them at all times, so it's always there with you, You're not, you don't have a time constraint that you have to give it back in you know, four weeks, etc. The disadvantages are, firstly, that you only record events after they've started, okay? So they don't have a memory. Sometimes, this is important, because sometimes 
particularly when you have heart rhythm disturbances which are fast and very regular, regular rhythm, it can be impossible to distinguish between sinus tachycardia, a normal fast heart rhythm, or an abnormal fast heart rhythm. And sometimes the only way we can tell is to see how the rhythm started. Did it start suddenly, which is more a heart rhythm disorder, or did it start gradually, like anxiety? Uh, so how do you distinguish between, say, anxiety and an SVT? And anxi anxiety would be, you know, your heart rate's going 80, 90, 95, 100, 150, 170. SVT, 90, 90, 90, 180. So that with the with these devices, you will miss that onset because they don't have a memory. You're only recording what you're recording at the time. And often you're only recording things after that's already started. They are very good for things like irregular heart rhythms because irregular heart rhythms, you can just see it's irregular, that's abnormal. So atrial fibrillation, it's uh, useful for. Ectopics, they can be very useful for, all right? Um, um, <clears throat> the, the other disadvantage with them is that uh, if you're a very anxious per person, sometimes you can get fixated with the device. Uh, and that uh, fixation can propagate more anxiety because you're constantly looking to see what's going on. And the other thing to say is that if your palpitations are very short-lived, sometimes it can be by the time you've got the device out, starting, started the app, the palpitations have gone. So they're good for people who are getting things like AF, um, but not so good if you've got short-lived episodes where the heart is going very fast and very regular. All right. And then finally, there is uh, the gold standard. Oh, by the way, with this one, I will put a link on uh, below uh, this video. Uh, and you can actually, if you click on that link, it'll take you to the Amazon page where they sell them. They're about £125, but then you have this thing for life. So finally, there is the gold standard, which is called a reveal device. Now, what a reveal device is, it's a small device like this. It's the shape of a small cigarette lighter. And you can actually implant it underneath the skin. The only reason we implant it underneath the skin is because it then stays on you for as long. You know, there's no opportunity where you could, for example, be getting up in the middle of the night to go to the toilet and leave the device by the side of your bed and then have your palpitations in the toilet. If it's on you at all times, it is the full, a foolproof way to be able to record what's going on with you at all times. Uh, they take about five to ten minutes to put in under local anesthetic and the device can stay on you for up to two to three years. It will auto activate if it notices any heart rhythm disturbance but you can also use a trigger to activate it if you get your symptoms. The data can then be downloaded at your local hospital without removing the device. So someone puts a sensor on there they download the data and they can see exactly what's happened to your heart during this time. These are great, you know, they're the, they're the best thing, but the problems with them are twofold. One, they're expensive, they cost about a thousand pounds, so you don't want to do them for every single patient because the NHS would collapse. And the second thing is, of course, they leave you with a tiny scar and if you're a young patient, you know, young woman or someone like that, you may not want that scar. And of course, when the reveal device is in you, it does leave a little protuberance over here. Obviously, that goes when the reveal comes out, but some people may not like the idea of having something protruding uh, under the skin. Um, so I hope this helps you in negotiating with your doctor as to which test you should have for your palpitations. Okay, remember, the more informed you are, the more likely it is that your doctor will be willing to negotiate with you and offer you the best test for you. So um, I hope you found this useful. Um, I, as always, you know, thank you. Thank you very much for everything uh, you say. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you for the great feedback. Um, uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please uh, consider sharing, subscribing, liking, commenting. Uh, please do come along to my Facebook page. Uh, I'm on Facebook as Your Cardiology One. Uh, my email address is yourcardiology at gmail.com. And um, my website is www.yourcardiology.co.uk. Should you want to ask me about any of these, please don't hesitate. Drop me a line. Thank you so much. Have a good night and all the best. Take care.